In this edition of Campus Report, Robert Gassaway introduces the newest addition to the Lobo men's basketball team. Ryan Hardway shows us how some UNM students are finding a cheaper way to commute to school. And Megan White takes a road trip to Roswell to find some little green men. I'm Saba Mohammed, And I'm Travis Weber. All this and more on this edition of Campus Reports. Local coverage. Student perspectives. At the University of New Mexico. From the KNME Studios, this is Campus Report. A new era of Lobo basketball has begun at the University of New Mexico. Robert Gassaway gives us an introduction. Steve Alford smiled as he slipped on the cherry red blazer and was introduced to a jubilant, standing room only crowd of Lobo players, school administrators, students, and fans. Alford received a six-year contract worth $975,000 annually to become the school's 19th head coach of men's basketball. He is charged with the task of reviving the passion for Lobo hoops since attendance and enthusiasm declined under the previous regime. The 42-year-old Alford leaves the University of Iowa after leading it to seven consecutive winning seasons. As a player, he won the 1987 NCAA National Championship under coach Bobby Knight at Indiana, becoming the school's all-time leading scorer. He also won a gold medal on the 1984 U.S. Olympic team and played three seasons in the NBA. Coach Alford seized the opportunity to take over UNM's struggling program because he sees extraordinary potential. I won't even look at the opportunity if I didn't know there was potential. I think the potential is unreal. you got a brand new practice facility. Uh, they're making a tremendous commitment to the program with facilities and uh, you got a pit to recruit to that's as, as tough a venue to play in the country and a lot of players loving to play there. And, uh, just a great environment. You know, a lot of times you have to come into an environment and you got to create the passion. The passion's already here. So, uh, the new coach made it clear that he wants to re-energize the student section at Lobo Home Games and believes fan support boosts recruiting and drives the program. The fans I spoke to were definitely excited about the new leader and the future of the program. I'm really excited. Uh, the Lobos, I've been a Lobo fan since I was a kid and, and just seeing a coach with a big name coming into the uh, New Mexico program is big. We haven't had that in a long time and uh, hopefully you can bring the excitement back to the pit like it was whenever I was a kid. Oh yeah, that's a big deal. I mean, you can feel it in the pit when it gets exciting, when you see like Tony Dandridge come down and slam it real hard. Everybody just gets on their feet and if you have like a lot of students there, I can, the intensity will just build and I think our team feeds off that a lot too. One member of the team, Lobo guard Jamal Smith, likes what he's heard from his new coach. I believe in the coach, you know, uh, just from his presence that he's shown in these, in these two times that we've met with him, you know, he's already shown that he has a great presence and he, and he can be a great leader. And, you know, we respect him and the, the team is ready to, to strap it on and play for him and, you know, do whatever it takes to, to, to win, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can look back and, and he's credited. You know, he's, he's been everywhere where we want to be. You know, he played in the NBA, and I have a lot of respect for a guy that played in the NBA because that's where every player wants to go. As you know, While acknowledging that patience isn't his greatest virtue, Coach Alford knows that major improvement takes time. And with a positive attitude and fresh outlook, his enthusiasm appears contagious. This is Robert Gassaway reporting. Although the UNM men's basketball team has had a rough season, the Scorpions are, are thriving in their new arena. We have here our very own Blaze Aldridge. Blaze, Thank welcome. Thanks. Do you think the new Scorpions arena will be attracting uh, more people? Yes, I think it will. Uh, all, stuff, all the new things being built downtown and Rio Rancho, it should attract more people. And uh, how do you think uh, the new arena compares to the old one? Uh, so quite a bit different. I mean, it's a new stadium. That's what all new stadiums have is new equipment concession stands, luxury boxes, stuff like that, so yeah. it's quite a bit different. And uh, how do you see the Scorpions doing in the future? Do you think this new are arena is going to help them? or? Yeah, it should. Um, with uh, them getting new players probably next, you know, next season, and everybody else moving up to the higher division, they should get a lot better because uh, they are really young right now, so I think next year they'll do pretty, pretty well. Just because of the new arena or just um, yeah, well, because, I mean, the fan base is, has to do a lot with that. And so, I mean, as lot more fans come to the games, they're going to edge on their team to help them do better. So, Okay, Blaze, really thank better. you so much for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. With gas prices consistently rising, many New Mexicans are finding that Albuquerque bus system is more efficient 
Ryan Hardway has the story. With the constant traffic in Albuquerque and the gas prices where they are, it's hard for many motorists to fill their gas tanks. At nearly $3 a gallon, it has many people searching for loose change just to raise their gas gauge a little. Some people, such as this person, who wanted to remain anonymous, feels the Albuquerque bus is the way to go to save money. First uh, riding last year, uh, gasoline got up to, the th what, 309 a gallon. And people were telling me, oh, I, was, uh, I bought uh, $60, $70 worth of gasoline last week, and uh, a bus pass costs you $28 a month. So, you know, a bus pass can get you pretty much everywhere in Albuquerque. There are places you can go for more information. The AlbuquerqueRide.com website tells all the information you need for bus schedules, times, and prices. Also, if you're a UNM student, you can get a bus pass for $12 a month rather than $28 a month. UNM student Dustin Thompson says parking at UNM is an uphill battle. Finding parking on UNM campus is really hard, and like you can just park in the like the south lots and stuff like that, and just ride the bus, and it's just quick and easy transportation. So, yeah. UNM student Ted Kircher says the bus gets him closer to work than his car ever did. Right by where I work downtown, and it's so much easier just like going from class, hopping on the bus, getting dropped off at work, and you don't have the uh, expense of gas, wear and tear on your car. The next time you're searching for money to fill your gas tank, stop and think that maybe the bus would be easier. For Camps Reports, this is Ryan Hardway. It's been 60 years, but the people in Roswell, New Mexico still remember the night that the town was put on the map. Megan White has more. One southeastern New Mexican town rose to fame during the summer of 1947 because of the new folks that came crashing into town. The American Broadcasting Company and affiliated stations present Headline Edition with Taylor Grant. Today's edition presents a roundup of the latest developments in the finding of a flying dip. Almost every lamppost, building, sign, and shop window are decorated with a touch of extraterrestrial. People drive thousands of miles just to visit and see the famous town, Roswell, New Mexico. It's a city with a green Walmart and a UFO spaceship-style McDonald's. Roswell may be a tiny town, but it has become a hustle and bustle of business and commerce after the supposed UFO crash a few miles outside the city. For the past five years in a row, that's five million dollars to the economy in Roswell. Roswell is even equipped with a UFO museum and research center that tackles all those tough alien questions and raises an eyebrow or two with a few stories. Bud Robinson, a museum guide, explains the mystery behind the UFO debris. They go to another room called the map room. While they're in the map room, the original debris is replaced with weather balloon debris. Hmm. Roswell remains shrouded in mystery for the doubtful, but for the believers, well, let's just say they feel like aliens themselves. Hungry. Ron Brinkley was such a friendly shopkeeper in a small alien souvenir shop downtown, he took us on a free extraterrestrial tour. All in here. Then we go on, 1953, September 12th. The first television broadcast from a pre-recorded date just had to be I Love Lucy. <laughs> Hours after this broadcast, around the entire world, the UFO sightings more than tripled. <laughs> There's I Love Lucy freaking out all the aliens. Is all this alien talk for a cheap dollar a way to make the city money, or could it really be the truth? Say if a hundred people in broad daylight, flying saucer lands in front of them, a bunch of little green guys get out, knock them all down, kick them, give them all wedgies, and then jump in the spaceship and run off again in five minutes, all of them will have themselves totally convinced, oh, there's no aliens. I just actually fell down and gave myself a wedgie. <laughs> These believers may sell you t-shirts, mugs, pens, bumper stickers, even alien toilet paper, but ask them if they're actually seeing aliens and... Well, if I told you everything I know, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Tourists continue to drive miles and miles for a mere glimpse of why Roswell is now famous all over the United States. And if they don't see a real alien, there's plenty of memorabilia to empty their pockets on. From Roswell, for Campus Report, I'm Megan White. Man, I could really go for some of that alien toilet paper right about now. Well, I'm going down there this weekend, so I'll pick you up some toilet paper. That would be fantastic. That's it for this edition of Campus Report. I'm Saba Muhammad. And I'm Travis Weber. Try not to get abducted, and we'll see you next time.